Okay, guys, I couldn't be happier to have another great interview. You know, we've been trying to do some new stuff with the National Professional Fishing League, so I couldn't be happier to have our next interview. I'm going to play a little intro here, and then, uh, well, before that, let me just tell you. His, uh, he's joining the NPFL, the National Professional Fishing League, this year. He was the 2015 season uh, of the Fishers of Men point champion with his good friend, I think, Bill, Billy Taylor. He's been partnering with his buddy John Cox, and his sponsors include Abu Garcia, Berkeley, and KCC Painting of Central Florida. Before we say I say hello to him, let me run this intro, and then uh, we'll we'll say hello. So here it is. I couldn't be happier to introduce, here he is, Keith Carl Carson. How are you, Keith? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty well, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you for doing this. This was last minute, and I really do appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I'm oh, used to, uh, you know, pulling things last minute. Yeah, it, being friends that's with John, like, yeah. does, I mean, that's kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, that's, that's his life. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> before we get into it, tell me a little bit about yourself. How how did you get introduced into the outdoors? Um. So you know, I grew up in uh, DeBerry, Florida, and I live on the vistas there, which is right across from Gemini Springs. Okay. So growing up as a kid, I used to ride my bike down to Gemini Springs, and I would see giant bass swimming everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for me, my way into fishing just kind of came through myself and just uh, I met John down there when we were kids and uh, we used to try to catch these fish and we were terrible. We could never catch them, but we would see them. So it kept us coming back because we knew that they were there. Um, and so, uh, you know, I just I just rode my bike down there every single day and, and tried to catch as many fish as I could. And sometimes it was just catching shiners on bread balls or brim and bread balls and not even catching bass but i just um i had this i have the same excitement now for getting a bite and catching a fish as when i was a little kid just catching brim or shiners or something yeah that's awesome um, so you know it wasn't necessarily that uh, i was born into fishing my dad doesn't fish he's a golfer uh, it doesn't necessarily run in the family my grandfather was an avid fishing fisherman but he passed when i was five so um, yeah, so it just kind of happened. That Gemini, I'm, I'm going off. I'm already off the, the whole wagon <laughs> here. I'm that Gemini Springs. I've been there because I told you before we, we went live here or before I started recording, I've been, I'm a DeBerry person too. Uh, that's yeah. where dad lives and you know, but I've been to Gemini Springs 50 or 60 times. I have never had success fishing over there for those bass. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, been really difficult uh years ago when i was a kid it was a little bit easier there used to be lily pads in there mm -hmm. um, but uh it's just kind of cleared out um and uh, there's not as many fish in there as there used to be yeah either uh, but uh, you pretty much have to have wild shiners to catch them if it's, you don't you're you're just yeah you're not gonna get them yeah it's funny that you say that i i was before before you and i went on here i our, our buddy John and I were talking briefly, but before that, I had Ken Duke, uh, who used to be the the editor of Bass, one of the greatest guys mm -hmm. in the whole world. And he was telling me how he and I, he's my fishing partner. He and I need to figure out how to fish shiners. And I'm like, that's cheating, dude. What are you talking about? We yeah, can't go yeah. out and go do this. <laughs> we're, we can't do this. Um, well, yeah. you, you, how, how long have you been tournament fishing? Uh, so I started tournament fishing when I was uh, 14. Okay. Um, luckily for me, I went to Deltona High School, and um, we were, we were fortunate. We had something called the TSA. It was the Teen Sport Fishing Association. Mm -hmm. And as long as you maintain above a 2.5 GPA, you were able to compete in these bass tournaments that happened uh, once per month. And we had a few throughout the year. And uh, we would compete against other schools, the Land High School, and other counties as well. And we would go to Lake Toho and you know the St. Johns River and such. And um, it's really what got me into it. You know, it was just competing for just trophies. And uh, by the time I was 16, I could not wait. I, I wasn't allowed to fish before then. And at 16, you were allowed to with the parents' consent because yeah. uh, the, you know the entry fees and gambling or whatever. Um, but uh, 
yeah so you know as soon as i got into the bfls um you know that was 2004 um and john was 17 at the time we both did co-angler and we paired up with a local guy uh, joe kramer and he fished boater side and we both went and practiced with him and he showed us how to sight fish. He taught us a lot about fishing, uh, really, you know, really taught us a lot of what we still use and know today. Uh, he was an excellent fisherman. He won the points uh, that year for the BFLs, the Gator Division. And, uh, you know, that really kind of kicked it off. So, yeah, I've been tournament fishing for almost uh, almost 20 years now. The was uh, when you were with uh, Teen Sport Fishing, was it Neil Lazarus who was in charge of it yeah. at that point? Um, so when I first started, it was, Neil was always a part of it. When I first started, it was actually Tony Strickland. Okay. Uh, Captain Tony Strickland. And I don't know if you remember, but he passed yes. that year in 2004 in a boating accident on uh, Lake Eustace. And yep. It got hypothermia. So then I believe it was, it was either Neil Lazarus or it was John Brown that took oh. over shortly after. Uh, one of those two. And John Brown was best friends with Tony Strickland. Yeah, they were they were great friends. So uh, one of those two um, ran it, and, and yeah, yeah. Neil, uh, we we usually do a gumbo cook off, and we donate money every year to Teen Sport Fishing and Seminole Junior Anglers. Still, uh, to this day, every they get a, a couple thousand from us. I think I don't know exactly how much, nice. um, but that's a that's a wonderful way to get started in the in, into it. Mm -hmm. Did did that did did you meet John at that point in time, and did he fish the TSA with you? No, John didn't fish the TSA. He went to Father Lopez, uh, which is oh. Daytona Beach. Yes. And they weren't a part of the TSA program. But he did go with me, and he was like my captain, you could say. Um, and so like we would pair together and go fish TSAs. But John, I met John before I had fished TSA. And throughout the time we were fishing TSA, John and I were competing in the uh, John Boat Club. Yes. It was actually, um, I think it was called the Deltona small boat bass club um and uh and that was what we were competing in at the time we had a 14 foot fiberglass with a 15 horse johnson and a cooler for a live well nice and yeah we were fishing all the local lakes lake gleason you yeah. know the different deltona lakes and such and uh and just had so much fun, you know. We'd we'd go out and win the tournament, and maybe win three hundred dollars, and we were like, "Holy crap, we made so much money!" You know, like, <laughs> that's one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that is that is awesome. Now you're you, you uh, the last couple seasons you've been fishing some of the the FLW stuff. How how is that making that tr transition from the Fishers of Men tournaments? To then going to FLW, how how was that transition for you? Um, well, you know, it's it was a big transition uh, moving up to that level. Um, you know, just just dealing with the amount of boats, uh, it changes your game plan. You know, you have to fish new waters every day. Um, these multi day tournaments with with large amounts of boats like that, um, you just have to keep moving. You can't really go back to the same spot unless you found some honey honey hole that no one's been to it which is very rare mm -hmm. i don't think it's ever happened to me um you know you, you just have to keep moving and find new fish so you know there's a a little bit of percentage where you need some luck on your side but uh you know um being optimistic and and you know keep moving is, is really the deal there when when you're fishing against that many boats now you're you making know? this giant move from this to now the npf well i should say the national professional fishing league i don't mean to when I say MPFL, that's what I mean. Now you're making your one of what is it? I don't even know maybe 90, 94, 96 anglers that they've they've got brought in so far. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to make this 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 is a really a giant move? Well, um, you know, I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it it's really appealing to me because I fish the ABAs a lot also still okay. uh, at this time. And I enjoy those because there's around 120, 130 boats per tournament. Mm -hmm. And it's just a great size uh, where you've got a good field with a lot of competitive, a lot of really skilled anglers. But it's not the size of like where the Bassmaster opens. You know, you have 230 boats. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I feel open, I love them. you know, it's just a lot of boats. So, yeah. so that was so appealing to me to have 125 anglers. Uh, it's got a new format where 
everybody fishes all three days. Yeah. And uh, I was talking to Brad Fuller about that. And he's like, what are your thoughts on that? And I said, well, you know, I said, obviously, if I'm the leader uh, going into the final day, I'm not going to like having 125 guys out there potentially in my area. I said, but let's say there's a tournament where, um, so, so first let me tell you, it pays 44 places out of 125 guys. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I said, let's say there's a tournament where going into day three, maybe I'm sitting in 50th place and I have a chance to just move up and get a check. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's awesome. I said, so it's got its positives and it's got its negatives. I was like, but I'm really cool with it. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm ready to roll with it. And, uh, uh, I like I like everything. Um, Brad's a really hard worker. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a no nonsense kind of guy, and I like that. And um, so you know, the, the schedule's not out yet, and like I'm not even concerned in the slightest bit. Uh, really? Where we're going? I yeah. I told him. I said, man, wherever we go, you just let me know, and I'm ready to fish. Do, and, I, uh, it sounded like you're more of a shallow water fisherman. You're kind of you kind of take after. Well, hopefully you'll have electronics on the boat to start off with, but you kind of fish <laughs> yeah. like John does, and John's right. a shallow water sight fisherman. I guess that's the best way to put it. What mm -hmm. are you confident if you have to go to smallmouth lakes that you're going to be able to fish well? Yeah, yeah, I'm very confident uh, going are. deep. Um, I don't, I don't know why exactly, to be honest, but uh, John and I. We fished, um, let's say back in 2010, we fished the FLW, maybe it was 2009, the FLW series. Uh, it was a series of four tournaments. It was a short, it didn't last very long, uh, that series that they had. Um, and it was like a, something that was in between at the time, it was in between the Strand series and the FLW tour. And it was uh, something they had. And so it went from Florida to Champlain. And that year we went up to Champlain and we bought graphs like, the day before we went up there and we started idling around and uh you know really learned it and john did fairly well in that tournament i was fishing co-angler side at the time uh, but he did fairly well and um we kind of learned the areas of the lake so you know, how how uh, small mouth position and how to catch them and such and um and with the way that technology is advancing you know i almost just feel more confident uh or, uh, you know, you just need to have that technology and be out there. And you just, you just have to get around them, really. That's all it is to it. Yeah. You mentioned you something know? about co-angler. When you're a co there, there's a lot of people. I'm one one person that thinks that going through the ranks of being a co-angler really can help you learn mm -hmm. from the people not only that, are, that you're fishing with, but also you can learn the lake a little better. When mm -hmm. you were a co-angler, did you get that same that same mentality? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I think that I think everyone should go through that phase of being a co-angler um, as far as just, um, you know, helping you advance mentally and everything. When when I was co-angler fishing FLW tour, I fished with David Dudley. I fished with Brent Ayler. I fished with a lot of those guys. And um, it was really mine. It was really opening eye opening for me because when you read about them in the magazines and such, you know, it's like it really holds them up so high. And then you actually spend the day and fish with them and you're like, Whoa, they struggle just as hard as we do, mm -hmm. you know, but they're smart enough to, to get five good bites usually throughout the day. They're consistent. And, um, and, and I learned a lot, you know, I fished with David Dudley up on, um, oh, the G short river, Lake St. Clair. And we hit hundreds of spots and just mm -hmm. kept moving till we ran into them, you know, and it showed me like, you just keep going, you know? And, uh, and Brent Ayler, I fished with him on the Red River, and I was fortunate enough to actually win the uh, FLW Tour tournament as a co-angler with Brent Ayler on the final day and caught some out in the back of the boat with him there. And, um, you know, it just yeah, really um, shows you to just, you know, keep your head down, work hard, and, um, you know, learn as much as you can, and, and hopefully things will go your way. How, how is it going to uh, – I mean, obviously, there. what is there going to be, six – is there six tournaments they're going to have for this year? Yeah, six to start off plus with. Plus championship. Plus championship. You know you got Uf Ufala to start off with. Have you been? Right. Have you fished Ufala ever? Many times. Yeah. Oh, you have. Yeah. So you're yeah. pretty confident yeah, I'm very right there. Excited. Yeah. In March, you know, hopefully it will be a pre-spawn, maybe spawn depending on the weather. Um, and so, yeah, that's that should be great. Uh, yeah, fish should be well. You know, a lot of guys are going to catch fish deep. You know, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of pre-spawners. There's there going to be some moving up. Um, fish are going to be that you follow from deep to shallow. Um, so it's, uh, you know, whoever puts it together and 
and uh, can maintain that, you know, so. It's not a bad place to start, to be honest, right. for the first <laughs> yeah. tournament. They kind of picked really a good, almost a perfect time and a great place where you can catch a lot of fish. How is it going to be for you for, you have a day job, I, I think I read. Mm -hmm. Have you already requested, I mean, I guess you can't request, Don't you're not allowed to talk about the schedule, so don't, because it will get okay. you in trouble. I don't want you to get you in trouble. But, I right. mean, have you... You, you, have you said, "Hey, I got to be gone this week"? Have you have you started to tell your you know tell your employer, "Hey, this is what's going on," I, I, and are they okay with it? Yeah, yeah well, I'm I'm fortunate enough where I actually work for my brother and his painting company. Okay, so, so oh yeah, like, well that's easy. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. tough yeah. luck, to, brother. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's funny because uh, I actually so growing up, my dad owned a painting company and worked for him. And John worked for him as well. John and I painted together for, I don't know, I want to say eight years. And we used to have tournaments and we would tell my dad, like, hey, we have to be gone this day. And he'd say, okay, no problem. And then the date would come and we would be swamped with work. And we're of like, course. Yeah, we have to go. And he's like, you're fired. You, yep. You're effing fired. You don't have a job when you get back. You and John both, you're I, done. I have and the we same like, father. Yeah. <laughs> and then we would fish. And then, like, a week later, he'd call. He's like, hey, when are you coming back? I need yeah. you real bad. And we're like, all right, Dad. Yeah, we'll be there. And uh, so, you know, I did that for a little while. And then I actually was a UPS driver for four years. And that was just far too strict. I couldn't fish at all. Yeah. Um, so I quit two years ago. That's what I was going to ask. painting with my brother. Yeah. yeah. And so now I'm back into it. And oh. my life's a lot better this way. Yeah. That that That's good. Uh, yeah. What do you think of that pond behind John's, I mean, how many fish, truthfully, I want to know, I've been there. How many fish have you dropped into the back pond at John's house? Well, I think <laughs> John's dropped a ton. I know the I know. very first year that John moved in there, we put in 27 over 7 pounds. Yes. The very first year. And, and we put in the ones that were strong and healthy from the St. John's River. I think a few from Harris Chain, but... Uh, a lot of those St. John's River bass are very healthy bass because there's that little bit of salinity in the water. They're mm -hmm. almost, you know, brackish. Uh, they're just a different breed of bass. And so those fish are, uh, those are the ones that are eating right out of his hand, jumping mm -hmm. up on the bank to get the bait. And, yeah. 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 Those, those yeah. are the St. John's bass, I think. Uh, favorite bait to, th favorite bait to throw in and, uh, and why? Wow. Well, you know, it depends on the time of the year. Um, so it's, let's say coming up uh, like you fall, like around the spawn time, I'm going to really like the Berkeley General a lot and I'm going to wacky rig it. Uh, the Max scent, they just they just swallow it right down their throat. Yeah. Um, and they just they just eat it. It wins tournaments. It, it catches fish. It's it's awesome. Yeah. It is. If you had one yeah. bait to use for in, let's say you had one bait to use at for the whole season, I'm not even going to say you okay. follow the whole season. Okay. What would it be? Well, okay. So my first answer, I would love to say chatterbait. Oh, but knowing if we're going to go to smallmouth lakes, yeah, you know, probably going to need probably the general again. Like yeah, I could drop shot it. I could fish it shallow. I could, I could, you know, Texas rig, Carolina rig. So you're confident. Yeah, I guess it'd have to be the general. You're confident drop shotting? Yeah. yeah. You are. Okay. I, as a yeah. Florida angler, me, yeah. you ask me to drop shot, uh, I'm shit out of sorry. I I don't care. Shit yeah. out of luck. I am I <laughs> yeah. am screwed. I mean literally. Yeah. Uh well, well, I, I, Go ahead. I I was just going to say yeah, I um you know, using a spinning rod growing up, that was always against uh, the way John and I fished. You know, we called them fairy wands. We thought, we thought if you have a spinning <laughs> rod in your hand, you're fishing for second place. You know? That's what I have to and use. Then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, then we, we got to Champlain and we tried using bait casters and stuff. And we learned real quick that uh, you better have a spinning rod and you better learn how to drop shot and get good at it. Or you're, or then you're fishing for second place. So, um, so yeah, it's not something I'm going to use down South, like rarely ever. Yeah. Um, unless, uh, unless it's wacky rig in the general, you know, when get, get me out in some 20, 25 feet of water, 
you know, yeah. uh, I'm just fine drop shot. Yeah. Uh, you know, being a Florida angler, you never, you do you ever go saltwater fishing? Not really. Really? No. What? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I've never caught a redfish in my life. Shut your mouth. Yeah, never. No, I've never caught a flounder. Uh, I have caught snook. Just recently, I caught my first snook in 2016. Um, <gasps> yeah, I, I like saltwater fishing a lot. And um, I even have an aunt. They have an offshore boat, and they live in uh, Dunedin out yeah. near Clearwater, Florida. And uh, and go with them. But usually it's offshore. We're catching grouper yeah. um, and stuff. I've caught a few king, but, yeah, not as much as I'd like to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, because I, I know what for me – I, I, technically, I'm a saltwater person first. I know that sounds weird, but because the last 10 years having a son and having to do all the other stuff that you have to do as a family, bass fishing has, has really become, I don't want to say it's my passion, but I do it a lot. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's easier to go right around the corner and go in a pond right around the corner. Right. But I got to tell you, as soon as you as soon as you catch one redfish, then you start going, "What? Wh why is this green fish turning its belly over after five seconds?" You know. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I under I definitely understand it. If, if where's your favorite place to fish locally? Is it St. John's River? Um, no, I don't think I like. So the St. John's is it's the hasn't best it become really I've tough. It has been tough. Yeah. yeah. And, and about 10 years ago, it was the best fishery maybe ever. Um, uh -huh. There, John and I would go out there. There's times that we've had 45 pounds with our five biggest bass. Yeah. Four, we went out the next day after that. We caught like 42 pounds with our five biggest, all on artificials, fun mm -hmm. fishing. And it hasn't quite been that good. Um, right now, I think the Harris chain is on fire. Mm -hmm. um, I fished a few tournaments out there this year, did well in all of them. I won a tournament there in July with 26 pounds, and I lost two seven pounders. I could have had in the like low to mid 30s. Yeah. Um, and then and then you know the college tournament was there recently, and those kids had what they have like 80 something yeah. pounds for three days. Yeah. So uh, it's, Harris is really fishing really well right now. Um, that's a good one. Toho is always great. Uh, and, you know, Okeechobee too. Uh, that's a good one. So I, I, I yeah. would really, 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 and I hope Brad is watches this because I already texted him that this would be on Monday. I really, really hope that they come to Harris Chain. That's the God's yeah. honest truth. I think they have the right format. There's enough hotels for everybody. Not like you need a hotel, but there's yeah. there's <laughs> good there's good places to stay and good food. But not only that, the bass fishing up to like. I mean, May, June, the bass fishing's still exceptional. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, didn't Scroggins, like, catch, like, 37 or 39 last year in the end of March or May or April? Yeah. Yeah, he I, did. Offshore, too. I yeah. know. Um, and that's one of the great things about Harris is that you can fish shallow and you can fish deep mm -hmm. all within a few hundred yards of, of the bank, basically. Um and uh, and so it's really versatile. So when those guys from up north have to come down here, it's not like, oh, I got to flip grass. You know, you can go offshore and catch 20, 30 pounds and win the tournament. And so uh, it's more of a level field, I think, for everyone. It's fair. It's a uh, it's a great place to fish. Um, it's going to produce some some big fish and some big weights. And uh, yeah, I mean, Harris is a great place to go. How much how, how, when you start when once the schedule comes out and you're able to, to you know, start doing research are you going to talk to john and say hey look this is where we're going are you going to bounce things off of him i don't even know if that's legal to be honest but I yeah i don't i don't think i'm allowed to oh, okay yeah um, i didn't i wasn't actually, sure but yeah so i just i gotta you know use the tools that um i have that all the other anglers do just you know google earth maps um and uh you know just figure it out as i go and and, and i'm learning to 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 just uh, kind of embrace that, you know, instead of uh, worrying about what am I going to do? What's this? You know, just roll with it. And it seems to it seems to be working to, with that mindset. So <laughs> when you get there to pre fish and you're pre fishing, are you going to fish or are you going to just map things out? And and next and also at the same time, you do have a I, I didn't I, I made fun of this, but you are going to have electronics on the boat, correct? I will. Yeah, okay. I will. After. 
you know, after the way live scope's been this year, it's, it's dumb not to, um, yeah. I mean, that thing is, uh, you know, I mean, you, you just have to, you have. technology is becoming so advanced that you, you have to have it or you're, you, you know, you're just not, not with it. So, uh, yeah, I will have electronics on the boat for the first time. For, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're a lot like John yeah. then, cause we've yeah, made, we, I've made yeah. fun of him for years. Yeah. Well, I borrowed his boat for the last one and there's, he's got electronics and then the transducers are all ripped off. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it's really just a chart for running, yeah. uh -huh. so, you know, that's it. <laughs> a couple of waypoints, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. La last couple of questions. And again, I really appreciate the time. If someone yeah. was, a, if there was a young angler and you're going to probably get this question a lot coming up soon, once you start seeing the public and you're in front of these guys with the NPFL. Do I love that they're doing the five fish across the stage and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If you were to have a young angler come up to you and say, I want to be a professional fisherman in my life, what would you tell them? How would you tell them? What would you tell them to get them to the next level? So, like, having watched John, you know, progress to the level he's at, I would tell him basically exactly everything John did. And that's just to go out and fish as much as possible and fish as hard as you can and find what works for you have confidence in your abilities and you don't don't fish like other people you know fish the way you want to fish and um you know if, if you want to go to college that's a great way to do it you can you know fish through all the college tournaments and then work into professional tournaments that way but you know i think one of the important things is just getting a John boat and just going fishing, sometimes put in at the boat ramp and put your trolling motor down and just start fishing and don't even start the big motor. I think that uh, there's too many young people. They want the big boats with the big motors and they want to drive and go everywhere fast. And, you know, when John and I started, I can't tell you how many tournaments we've won without even starting the big motor, um, even on, on, on big lakes as well. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's important to just, uh, Get that trolling motor in the water, learn as much as possible, find what works for you, build some confidence and start fishing co-angler, you know, join the BFLs, join the ABAs. And when you're ready, move up to the uh, Bassmaster Opens or the FLW series, um, you know, and just uh, get your feet wet and then and see how you feel, you know, build some confidence, get a few checks and, uh, you know, go from there. Are you going to fish any other tournament, any other tournament schedules? Also, this season of, with NPFL, are you going to do any opens or any of the Toyota, you know, the FLW stuff? Uh, yeah, I am. Once uh, the entire schedule comes out and I see what fits, uh, then I'm going to work in everything else that I can fish. But yeah, I would like to do uh, something in combination with NPFL. Yeah, that's Definitely. awesome. Well, everyone, make sure you go to his Facebook page. I've got it on the bottom here. Uh, you Do you have Instagram by any chance? You're going to have to get Instagram. You know that. I got it. Yeah. Instagram, it's uh, Keith underscore Carson. And it has two ends because the regular Carson was taken. Of course. Uh, but yeah, Keith underscore Carson. That's my Instagram. And yeah, you can find me on there. Check that out. Check them out when they start. Uh, the NPFL starts on Lake Eufaula. It sounds like you got, first off, you have a great friend in John because he just thinks the world of you to, to start Thanks. off with. Uh, and but you got a great friend that is that obviously having that relationship is wonderful. I wish you all the best of luck. If there's something I can do to help you, I'd love to be able to help you. You go over to Harris Chain, come pick me up on the way over because yeah. I'm on the way over there and I'll yeah. film and we'll have fun. But thank you for your time. Everyone go check him out and uh, stay there for one second. I'm going to say goodbye. But thank you again for your time and, and we'll see you soon. No problem. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Hold on a second. Guys, when we get back, we'll talk a little bit more about fishing.